Hello and welcome once again to CTF Security. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what local file inclusion is, the impact and uh, possible solution or prevention of local file inclusion. And I'm also going to be walking you through a track mail room dedicated to learning file inclusion vulnerability, which covers information disclosure, directory or path transversal or remote code execution. We will also cover LFI filter bypass and possible solution to LFI vulnerabilities. Uh, the local file inclusion is an attack technique in which attacker trick a web application into either running or exposing files on a web server. LFI attack can expose sensitive information and in severe cases, they can lead to cross-site scripting attack and remote code execution. These attacks typically occur when an application uses the path to a file as an input. Uh, if the application treats that uh, input as trusted, attacker can use the local file in an include statement. The impact of a local file inclusion attack can vary uh, on the exploitation and uh, read permission of the web server user. Based on this factor, an attacker can gather username via Etsy password file, harvest useful information from log files, or combine these vulnerabilities with other attack vectors such as file upload vulnerability to execute command remotely. Now let's take a look at three possible outcomes of a local file inclusion attack. One, information disclosure. Although not the worst outcome of a local file inclusion vulnerability, information disclosure can reveal important information about the application and its configurations. That information can be valuable to an attacker to gain a deeper understanding of the application and uh, can help them to detect and exploit other vulnerability on the system. Number two is a uh, directory transversal. A local file inclusion vulnerability can lead to directory transversal attack where an attacker will try to find and access file on the web server to gain more useful information such as log files or other important files on the host system. It may interest you to know that log files can reveal the structure of the application or expose parts to sensitive files on the host system. And the number three is a remote code execution. LFI combined with a file upload uh, vulnerability can lead to remote code execution. In this case, the attacker will use the LFI to execute uh, the unwanted file on the host uh, system. Now, without further ado, uh, let's jump into the uh, tax for this room. Okay, guys, now that we understand what local file inclusion is in regards to file inclusion vulnerability, let's take a look at what track me has for us in this room. Uh, but before we do that, for accessibility, I would like to modify my host file to point at a domain name for this particular IP address of this room. So I'm just going to copy this IP address and uh, navigate to my terminal. Okay, so from the terminal, I can just edit my host file. And this will uh, open up the host file. So I'll just replace the host file here. And um, I can now, sorry, I can now assign a domain name to it. So let's call it uh, lfi.thm. So we cannot access this room using this particular domain name instead of this IP address. I'll just save this. And now we could uh, go back to our browser and uh, access that particular web page using uh, lfi.thm. Okay, great. So we now have access to the labs. Uh, so I'll just go back to the triacme here. On the tax one, this is just talking about the introduction to file inclusion and uh, the structure of file inclusions and um, some external resources to file inclusion vulnerability. Uh, you can take your time to read through these resources here if you don't understand what local file inclusion is or what file inclusion is. So I'm just going to jump this and just click on completed. And uh, on the task two is talking about deployment. So what we have to do in this uh, section of this exercise is to just click on this big green button right here to start our machine. And uh, I can just click completed because I've already done that. So I'll move to task three, which is a path transversal. And the question right here 
is uh, what function causes path transversal vulnerability in PHP. Uh, so you can find this on the paragraph 2 of the content right here. The paragraph 2 says path transversal vulnerabilities occur when the user's input is passed to a function such as file get content in PHP. So this is obviously the answer we are looking for. So we'll grab that and um, fill that in. Submit. Okay, that was correct. Uh, so we'll move to tax 4. So the first question on tax 4 says, give lab 1 a try to read the Etsy password. Uh, what will the request URI be? Uh, you can click the int if you don't actually understand and this is giving us uh, an example of how we can pass parameter through the URL. So I'll just close that and we move to our lab and uh, click on the lab one. So this should open up our working environment. Uh, so one thing I like to do when testing for a local file inclusion is, is to just uh, pass a random word to the search parameter so uh, let's just use uh, ctfsec obviously there shouldn't be any file called ctfsec on this machine okay great so we have error message revealing the information happening at the back end of this application we have uh, an include statement trying to include this particular file we entered into this search box right here and uh, when it couldn't find the file, throw in this bunch of error, uh, error code on the screen. So now we know that whatever we entered here is being passed uh, using uh, the include statement to the application. So what we can do is to replace our parameter on this uh, entry point, which is the file, to a directory uh, transversal entry. So what I'm going to do is try to uh, use directory transversal to view the Etsy password as requested by TriAcme. So what I'm going to do is uh, to issue the command uh, slash Etsy slash password and see what this gives us. Okay, interesting. So we have our uh, Etsy password file just by passing this particular uh, parameter into this particular search query into this uh, file parameter right here. So this is how we can uh, use directory transversal in order to view uh, sensitive information from a particular web application. So let's see what the question says. So we are looking for the URI. Grab this from here. And uh, paste. And that was correct. So we move ahead to lab 2. In lab 2, what is the directory specified in the include function? So what we need to do is to navigate back to lab 2. Okay, and just like we did in lab one, we can throw a random character in to get an error message. Okay, so we get the error message we want. We have the include function. We are using the include function on the lab two. So I'm just going to paste that here. So we'll move ahead to tax 5, which says, um, let's see, tax 5 says, uh, give lab 3 a try and read uh, the Etsy password. What, what does the request look like? So uh, you can click the int button. If you get stuck along the way, don't trust the input form, insert into the browser address bar. Okay, that sounds like no clue, right? 
so let's see what we are dealing with on the lab 3 I'm just going to go back to lab 3 so let's throw a random word CTF sec okay so you can see the include statement this is using it's using include a statement but it's not passing uh, the file entered into this uh, search box directly to the include statement rather it's passing the file along with the .php extension so this becomes a problem and uh, in order to bypass uh, this issue we're going to use a local file uh, inclusion bypass method called the null byte and uh, we have the explanation of the null byte right here okay uh, using null byte is an injection technique where url encoded representation such as uh, this and this in hex uh, with user supply data to terminate uh, strings you could think of it as trying to trick the web app into disregarding whatever comes after the null byte and we have a typical example of a null byte uh, character right here so what we're going to be doing uh, on this lab is to pass uh, a null byte character along with uh, our payload so what i'm going to do is to grab the etsy password file here just grab that so we'll be passing it along with the direct transversal payload so let's just pass a bunch of these in respective of the location we are trying to escape from so i'll just paste the character here and uh, we send that Okay, excellent. Uh, as you can see, we're able to view the Etsy password using the null byte uh, character. So uh, let's see what the question actually is. Uh, the question says, um, what, is the what does the request look like? So we're having one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm just going to pass. We have it starting from this point. Just four of this. Let's pass this and see. Okay, let's just pass four. Okay, excellent. So we only have um, four escaping directory transversal character right here. So which the next question says which functions is causing the directory transversal in lab four? So we have to navigate to lab four to answer this question. So let's go back to lab four. So as usual, CTF sec. So we can see uh, as the re question uh, requested, which function is causing directory transversal? So the directory transversal on this uh, lab for is file get content. So just copy this and uh, paste right here. Awesome. So uh, the next question says, um, try out lab six and check what is the directory that has to be uh, in the input field. 
okay so we have to navigate to lab six so we throw in random character So excellent. So we can see uh, from this point it says uh, file content preview of um, CTFSEC access denied allowed file at THM profile. Uh, so this uh, can be explained on the on this paragraph right here. Finally, we will discuss the case where a developer forces the include uh, to re to read from a defined directory. Uh, for example, if the web application has to supply input uh, that has to include a directory such as uh, this, and uh, we have a particular directory called language uh, before uh, whatever file uh, and the extension, then to exploit this, we need to include the directory. So what happened is uh, uh, this has been filtered, the lab6 has been filtered uh, to only uh, search for file on this uh, THM profile folder. So in order to execute a directory transversal uh, payload on this uh, particular lab, we have to specify the THM profile. So I will just copy this. And I'll paste this right here. Nice. Uh, okay. The next question says, try out lab 6 and read the Etsy uh, slash OS release. Uh, what is the OS version ID value? Uh, so what we're going to be doing is to uh, send this uh, command, the OS, to read this particular file. That is the Etsy slash OS release uh, file uh, from the web application. So I'm going to add to the lab 6 and... Uh, as usual, we're going to manipulate the query uh, to this time around THM slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot dot slash dot slash let's make it four and um, let's see slash password. So for proof of concept, that is actually working. So what I'm going to do is to change this particular uh, command right here to what we are asked to view, which is the OS release. So we're just going to copy this OS release. And um, replace... Place that. Okay, nice. And uh, what are we looking for? We are looking for the version ID. So what's the version ID? The version ID is uh, 12.04.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.